In today's tutorial let's learn how to do a dishcloth. This is the chrysanthemum. This is an optical illusion and we're gonna cover this next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. In today's tutorial we're going to work on the chrysanthemum dishcloth. This is an optical illusion. The pink is one solid circle and then the yellow here was added in afterward in two rounds that make it look like it was part of the, the stitch work. So if I turn it around here's what the back looks like. So visualize none of the yellow coming in and just visualize it as a large circle and what we're going to be doing today is that I'm gonna teach you how to make this circle and then the last two rounds we're gonna show you how to make the petals and again this is an optical illusion. You can see it's very three dimensional. It will lay flat if uh, when you're going to use it and it's very decorative and it's actually quite cheerful at the same time. So before we get started there's two types of yarn that are on the market. They're both made by the Yarn Inspirations. Now in Canada you will know this as Bernat Handicrafter and if you're in the United States you will know it as Lily Sugar and Cream. So you just have to be able to find the one that is closest to you in a retail store. So without further ado let's grab our crochet hook. We're gonna need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today and two colors of either Lily Sugar and Cream or Bernat Handicrafter. You decide. Let's create a slip knot to begin and in this pattern it says chain two does not count as a half double crochet in the first and the third rounds and I'll explain that as we go because that's important to know that right up front. So let's uh, get out with our slip knot here. Remember that never counts as one and we're gonna chain four. So one, two, three and four and we wanna join it to the very first chain over here and just yarn over pull through to create the center ring. When we go to operate the center ring then we just want to leave the straggler around uh, the outside of it so we can trap it underneath for round number one. Let's begin round number one now. So round number one we're gonna chain two. This does not count as anything. It's more of a builder and then we're going to do ten half double crochets into the ring. So we wrap the hook going into the center of the ring. Okay so if you can just see it there's a ring right in the middle where you did that um, slip stitch into the first one and we want to put ten half double crochets in. So one and two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm starting to run out of space so because you're just going on the ring you can just move everything around. So I've already done six and seven, eight, nine, and 10 and what's it it's saying now to slip stitch to the first half double crochet. So we chained up here's the two. See how it's just standing out there like a sore thumb. So you want to go to the very top one here right up here and you're just gonna slip stitch. That's the very first half double crochet. So you're skipping right over that chain two area and that does a nice closing area of round number one. Let's move along to round number two. We're gonna chain two and remember this does not count as anything. It's more of a builder. So in every stitch coming right directly below we're going to put in two half double crochets into each one going all the way around. So that was one and two. So you just keep moving around and so if you have ten half double crochets in this round you will have eventually twenty half double crochets going all the way around for round number two. I'll leave that for you. Put in two half double crochets into each stitch going all the way around. So I've come up all the way around and it appears that I have one more stitch left but I don't. If you count the groups of ten or groups of two there should be ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's two in each. This one here is not a stitch. See how it's kind of leaning over toward that chain two? It's just more of the same stitch here. So it appears that it's an extra stitch and a lot of crocheters go wrong right there with adding an extra. So all you're just gonna do is top of the first um, half double crochet. Okay so not the chain two. It's the first half double crochet right at the top. You are going to uh, do a slip stitch and join it and once you do it pulls everything back into alignment just like that. Let's move along to round number three. So let's chain two again. It doesn't count as anything once again. Coming straight down I want you to put in two half double crochets into every stitch once again going all the way for round number three. So the last round we ended up with twenty half double crochets. This time we'll end up with forty because we're gonna double with putting in a half double crochet into every stitch going all the way around. I'll leave that for you and I'll see you back here in just a moment. 
So I've come up all the way back around. Now there should be 20 groups of two going all the way around making a total of 40 half double crochets. I want you to join this now to the beginning half double crochet like you did in the last round. And now we're gonna start doing something slightly different in this pattern. You will notice in this pattern that we have like what is like petals and etc. That is done in the very last round. So if you're thinking to yourself you're going way off track at this point because you're not seeing any of the petal formation. That's an optical illusion that's done right at the end of this pattern. In round number four is when we take a slight detour. Now chain two at the beginning of the rounds now, now count as a half double crochet. So they didn't before but now they do. So what we're going to do is we're going to create like the petal formation behind the scenes and the colors that are overlaying on top to make it look like a true petal is done afterward. But we have to prepare the behind the scenes dishcloth. The behind the scenes is all completely solid from front to back. It's just an optical illusion on the petals. So let's begin. We're gonna chain two which counts as a half double crochet crochet and in the same space that you've done the join you want a half double crochet once again followed by chain one and then half double crochet back into the same spot two more times. So this is kind of one part of your of a leaf being formed. So then what you have to do and we're gonna do this all the way around is that we're going to skip over uh, we're gonna skip over two stitches. So one and two go to the third and then half double crochet in twice followed by a chain one and then coming back into the same spot half double crochet twice once again. So that's gonna be your repeat pattern going all the way around. So you're gonna skip over two. So one and two go to the third. So half double crochet in twice followed by chain one and half double crochet twice into the same spot. So please do that same idea going all the way around this particular round for round number four. So finishing up round number four I just want to just join it to the beginning um, chain two that we had started with. So the top of the chain two. Okay just with the slip stitch. You should have a total count of 13 of these half double crochet sections. Okay so there's two half double crochet, chain one, two halves. So therefore you should have a total of 13 of those. Let's move along to round number five. Okay round number five we're going to slip stitch ourselves to the chain one spaces and we're gonna play in the chain one spaces at the at the peak of each tip. So let's just a single or sorry slip stitch our way over to the chain one space. So one and go right into the first chain one space right there. Okay so you're in between two half double crochets. You're going to chain two which counts as a half double crochet and do what you've done before. So half double crochet once again, chain one and then two halves into the same one. So round number five is about maintaining what you've already kind of started. So just come over to the next chain one space over here. Okay the next peak and put in two half double crochets over and then chain one and then two half double crochets in. Okay so that's the repeat pattern all the way around for number five. Really quite simple. So once you get each uh, tip done you just jump into the next one. So chain one space over here, two halves, chain one and two halves. Please do that all the way around for round number five. Coming up all the way around on round number five you just want to join it to the first chain two. Top of the first chain two to finish off round number five. So it's still laying flat at this point so if it's buckling up for you something is quite wrong. But now we're gonna move on to rounds of, uh, six and seven. They're both identical if you look at the pattern. Let's begin round number six next. So let's slip stitch ourselves to the center point the chain one space. Okay so let's just move over. So we're gonna slip stitch twice over. So one and two to the chain one space. And now this one is going to be very similar to what you've already done in rounds four and five but it's gonna be slightly bigger this time. So six and seven are gonna be slightly different. So we're gonna chain two which counts as a half double crochet but these are gonna be bigger this time. So we're going to put in two more half double crochets in a row. Okay followed by a chain one and then uh, three half double crochets on this side. Okay so each one of the peaks is gonna have three half double crochets and then followed by chain one and then three half double crochets. And then once you get that done just reach on over to the next chain one space which is the next peak and put in three half double crochets. So one, two 
and three followed by chain one and then three half double crochets and again again into the same one. So please do that same idea going all the way around for round number six. So three half double crochets, chain one, three half double crochets in each one of the peaks and I'll be back in just a moment. So finishing up round number six I wanna join it to the beginning chain two. So round number seven let's move along. We're just gonna quickly go and we're gonna slip stitch ourselves again to the first chain one space. So I think this time you'll be slip stitching three times. So one, just slip stitching nice and patiently going over. If you jump over then you, you'll have this loose string that will be hanging out in the front of your project. So now I'm in the chain one space. Again this one's very similar. Chain two and then th two more half double crochets into this one because the chain two counts as one of them. Followed by chain one and then three half double crochets on this side. So each one of the peaks for round number seven is the exact same. For round number six it was reaching over. Next chain one space over here is gonna get three half double crochets followed by chain one and then finishing off the same peak with three half double crochets on the other side of it. So please do that same thing going all the way around. Three half double crochets, chain one, three half double crochets in each one of the peaks going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just going to join it to the beginning chain number two. So it's still laying flat at this point. You should still know that. So if anything's going wrong at this point then um, you would really know if it's starting to buckle up on you. Let's move along to round number eight. There's only two more rounds left and let's do round number eight next. Before we begin round number eight we actually have to fasten off. So what we have to do is, do is cut your yarn and let's finish off this color. So this is the last time you'll be seeing this pink and I just want to just weave it in a few of those stitches here and you might want to grab a darning needle. Actually if you're gonna use this as a dishcloth let's grab our darning needle and show you how to be able to finish that off nicely. So we're gonna just take our darning needle and place the yarn through the needle. This is what I would recommend seriously so because it, it is a dishcloth. So just coming into the stitches just gliding them underneath. Okay. And then just going in three different directions. So we'll go one and then come back in the same direction for two. Okay and then finally going back in the third direction for three. So now I can safely cut that out and I don't have to have that falling out if I'm actually gonna use this for my dishes. And while I got my scissors out I might as well get rid of that loose end right in the beginning that I had you hide underneath. So let's move on to round number eight. It's still laying flat and let's move on. Let's move along to round number eight. I'm gonna create a slip knot first and I'm gonna slip my hook on. So what I want you to do is I want you to come to the chain one space and just insert right into the space itself. So just follow it out and just grabbing the strand leading to the ball. I want you to chain two. It does not count as anything so just attach it. So just going in, attach it, okay? And then chain two, one and two. It doesn't count as anything, okay? So it's just more of a builder in this one. So we're going to do eight double crochets into the same space. So let's count those out together. So one and two, three, four, five, Six, 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 <laughs> and seven, and eight. So there is my eight in. So once you have your eight done, I want you to put a single crochet in this space here. Okay, so here's the next chain one point out there. Put a single crochet right into the space. And then start eight double crochets in the next chain one space over here, okay, in the peak. Okay, so let's count those out together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and then one single crochet in the next space right here. Okay so do that all the way around. So eight in the peaks 
and one single crochet in the space in between. Please do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I've got my eight in. Don't forget that you gotta do a single crochet right in that space in between and then just join it to the beginning chain three to the top of the beginning chain three. This is what it looks like at this point. So you're thinking where are the petals? That's coming up next in round number nine. So let's begin round number nine. So what's gonna happen here is that we're gonna start off and we're gonna go around the outside of this one here and then we're gonna dip down all the way down into here and then back up and then around the outside and then down back up and all the way around. So let's begin to do this for round number nine. This is very simple. So you just gotta just kinda follow along. So chain one and I want you to single crochet into the same space that you did the join. Okay that's the top of the chain three. Chain one and then single crochet into the next half or double crochet. Chain one, single crochet into the next. 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 See, it's kinda easy. Chain one, single crochet into the next. Chain one and single crochet into the next. So now you're out of double crochets that are in the top here. So where do we go here? We're gonna go down. Watch. So we've just done the single crochet in the final here. So we're gonna chain one first and on this side of, of the shells work. So you've already come in here but on this side we're going to put it in just going wrapping around that space. I want you to put in a single crochet followed by a chain one and then coming down to the next one. Just go right into the space and do a chain one or sorry, double, uh, single crochet, then chain one, coming to the next space, down, single crochet, chain one, and then coming right down into the base. So you're gonna stop once you're running out of these shells, okay, which is this one, layer right here. Okay, so you can't really go any further because it gets all solid from here. You're then gonna chain one and work your way back up. So continuing around the same spot you were just at. So you're gonna single crochet, chain one, single crochet the next one up, chain one and then single crochet on this side. Okay, so right over on this side of the of the same space. Single crochet, chain one and then you're gonna start in these double crochets around. So you're gonna go right in uh, and uh, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one and I will review going down again. So single crochet, chain one, 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 single crochet into the final one. So let's start going down again. So we're gonna chain one first and then coming on this side. So see how it's already in? So come on this side of it and single crochet around that space. It's a little awkward I have to say um, but it looks amazing if you do it. It gives a really great optical illusion. So single crochet, chain one, come down to the next space, chain one, come down to the next space, okay, chain one, come down to the final space because you're running out and just look at where your neighbor was as well. So then you are going to chain one and work your way back up. So going back up the other side, Make sure you're chaining one in between. This one here because you've already gone in there come in this side of it followed by a chain one and they go around the outside again. So just double or single crochet chain one and you're gonna keep doing that around and I'll review, I'll review going down one more time. Okay so you just gotta make sure you single crochet chain one. So by doing that chaining one on the outside like you're doing right now it's gonna have this sit down flat. Um, it'll buckle if you don't have that in there. That's why it's in there. Okay, so you got the final one that's double crocheted. So chain one, okay, looking down. Okay, come on this side of it. Single crochet, chain one, come down to the next one. Chain one, next one, chain one, come down to the final one. Chain one, chain one and go back up. you get that? So this is a completely optical illusion. It's added in afterward and a lot of people don't get that. So coming back up so you're gonna come on this side of it 
and then do a chain one and then do the top around. So you're gonna please do that all the way around and this will finish off your dishcloth. I'm coming up all the way back around. I'm making my way back to the top to where I had started and uh, it's really quite an easy pattern. I love, ha I love how it's an optical illusion without having to sweat a lot of the fancy stitch work. It's just the illusion doing it all. So when I get back to the top here I'm gonna chain one and then just join it to the first single crochet. So chain one, join it to the first single crochet and I'm gonna take in my darning needle now and I'm gonna weave in my ends. So I'm just gonna cut this about 12 inches long about a foot and I'm gonna pull through and I just want to weave this in with the darning needle into where I've done the same color so they don't have any color bleeding as far as like peeking out of, the, of the, any of the pink. So if you weave in just like I showed you before into three different directions so just underneath the stitch work about an inch coming up underneath in the same direction and go back in the same direction from which you just came. I'm, I'm staying underneath the stitches and not on top of the border because people will notice that. So two and then coming back in the same direction for three. So if you do in three different directions this tail should never fall out. A lot of people use the dishcloths on your inspirations for very decorative uh, uh, ideas. You can also use them as hot plates uh, holders as well. It's kind of a neat idea. So this is the conclusion of doing the chrysanthemum. You can see it lays flat and it does a really great thing. You could even make this thing into a clock if you wanted to. Here's what the back looks like. Oh there's my starting end there. Let me get rid of that. So that's what the back looks like there. Really quite simple. So you can see that the pink was all completely one unit and that the other yellow color is just an optical illusion going down over top. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as HairInspirations.com. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.